Welcome to another episode of the Tech Vault with myself, Mitchell Sellers. Uh, here, I just got back from Microsoft Ignite, which was an absolutely amazing event. And I spent a lot of time working there in the expert session, helping people navigate the various AI tools that are out there. We always talk about AI this, AI that. It's all AI. And one of the most fundamental questions that I was asked in my time staffing three different booths at Ignite was, what do I do with AI? Where do I start? How do I go? And I thought that would be a great place to use this platform here to share a little bit about how I approach this when we have a customer that says, hey, we want to use AI or we want to integrate AI with our project, or we want to do something with AI. Um, and it's really just fundamentally, if you want to implement AI in your organization, where do you start? What do you do? What's that high level process look like to bring AI into your project? I'll show you a couple of different things here today that are really, really interesting when we talk about the things that we can do or the things that we can't do along the way and how it's so easy to get yourself overwhelmed. And hopefully here in a few minutes, we'll make life at least make a little bit of sense for us along the way. So when we really just start to look at an AI project, it's not good enough to just say, hey, I want to implement AI. If you tell that to your development teams or the third party that you're working with, um, they're going to look at you, just kind of scratch their head and want to walk the other way. We really have to have some sort of a problem. We need to identify what's the thing we're trying to solve. What do we expect to get out of AI? That is potentially something incredibly high level. I want to take this process and I want to automate it. I want to take this process and make it faster. I want to take this rudimentary human process and make it completely automated, right? We're looking to do something out there. Then what we have to do is go out and look at what is there. Do we have the right data to be able to fill the model? And so as we talk about what this means. I'm not just talking about the AI models that are out there. I'm also talking about what are we validating this against? So if, for example, we want to make a process better, we need to have examples of the process being completed successfully in the past. Because in any AI solution, one of the most critical pieces is going to be to validate that the AI did the job successfully. So what that means is we need to have expected inputs and expected outputs. And we need to be able to pair those pieces together so that we can make sure that the final result that we got actually matched our expectations. That's gonna be one of the most critical things that you hand to any development team that you have or any implementation team that you have. What am I trying to accomplish? And here's an example of what's going to work well in our project. If you don't have that, it's not even possible to get started with your AI solution. So that is understanding what you want to accomplish. That is going to be one of the really key pieces. Now, the next piece to the puzzle gets a little bit interesting, and this is sometimes where the boundary happens between the developer and person that's implementing it and the person that's coming up with the idea that says, hey, we need to do something with AI. And that is identifying the tools, if you can, that are out there. Right? Does Microsoft have an AI tool that makes things easier for you? Is there something in Foundry that is pre-built that you can plug into? Is there a existing model from a third party that you might be able to consume that helps get in your get your path to a right solution? If you can start with these pieces, it makes it really, really easy to take those next steps of scoping, implementing, and validating an AI project. So when we tar start looking at this, I thought it'd be really good to just kind of talk about two very specific examples that we've had recently with customers and how this was able to make our lives really easy when trying to provide a solution and move them through this process. One of them had a, their, their need was simply, we have thousands of documents that are in English and we need to translate them to Spanish. They looked at the traditional ways of doing it, paying a translation company, doing a manual translation, doing other things. And it was cost prohibitive to be able to do that. When we went out and looked, right, there are tools, including Azure AI Translate, that works against PDF documents. 
And so to get this goal, that's a really concrete goal. I need to take these documents from English to Spanish and need to do it in a regular fashion. So that gave us a good need. We found a couple of tools. And then the biggest thing was we needed them to be able to give us things to vet. So they gave us example documents and then they had native Spanish speakers. So then it was really easy to take it to the next stage, which would be prototyping and take those documents, run them through the translation process, hand them over to the native speakers and say, hey, what do you think of this? How does this work compared to what you might have done if it was yourself? This allowed us to quickly go through a prototype phase, get the thumbs up from the experts and move them on to the next stage of the process. So really cool, quick, easy thing that we're able to solve for them. That system today, now from any time they update a document to the time that a Spanish version is created is less than 30 seconds, providing a much better user experience for all of their users that are native Spanish speakers. Another example um, was a customer that had a document process that required a human review of 80 to 120 page documents, simply looking for the document, making sure that it had the right check boxes checked to make sure that it has all of the different things you know, done that needed to be done, and then provide a overall summary of this is what I found and this is you know, what we were able to do with it. That made it really, really easy to be able to say, hey, this is, this is gonna be a good document and here's the results. And then now they're human reviewers. Instead of flipping through all of the different things, we have an AI solution that did the same thing, looked for the same information and says, hey, I found this on page 23. I found this on page 27. I found this on page 60. So now there are reviewers, instead of flipping through and trying to find where it might be in the different pages of the document, they're simply verifying that the AI validation was valid, that it looked in the right place and was able to do everything that it was that they wanted to have done. And that saved them a bunch of time. A lot of human interaction got moved along the way. So if we start there from our technology perspective, it makes it a lot easier to be able to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to move that project forward. Now, when we go from here and we know what this goal is, then we have to start looking at all of the extra pieces. What exactly is that stopping point, right? So it's taking those initial goals and turning them into a concrete project scope. Okay, we did this automation process, the document translation was good. Now we need to say, what are the boundaries of this project? Does it, is it completely automatic? Does it need a manual review process? How are we going to take this from the very beginning stages to the end product of getting it published out on the website? And that's gonna really buy, be done by combining the project scope and the business problem together. Um, and then really, again, any data things um, are important, but then the success metrics are going to be the most important thing. Is your success metric that it's done within a certain amount of time, that it's done with a certain level of accuracy? What is your target? For the Spanish translation, for example, the success criteria was sample relative data being reviewed was good enough. In the case of a, the document review process, that one was a much larger review. They wanted to actually prove that of the existing last 200 documents that were completed, did the AI and the human reviewers come up with the same results? That was their success criteria. Again, we're working to formulate to that process of, of where do we go? So then how do we do that? What, what's, the, what's that right way to say, okay, I know this, I know what my goal is, I know where I want to go. How do I actually validate an AI solution? And this is one of the things that's really, really interesting when we look at AI is how do we actually provide the accuracy? Um, once that could happen, we all get lucky. And so with AI, it's really, really important to evaluate that accuracy over time. Only way that we can do that is with multiple pieces of content. And we're not talking two items or five items or 10 items. We're talking about hundreds. So we need to be able to do that. We need to validate all of this, not only from a 
number of inputs and getting the right output. We also need to make sure that the usability of whatever we do, if it is a user interfacing change, is also accurate, right? So this is where that testing and usability side of things really comes into play. Now, one of the biggest things that we need to look at, and I think it's harder for people to wrap their head around, is trying to find any sort of bias that might be appearing. Does the AI tend to favor one decision versus another? Does it try to do different things and take things into consideration that may apply? This may not apply in all scenarios, but it's important to really look at it. It's also important to continue to review this afterwards. One of the biggest things that we're struggling with in technology today is that we used to have this mindset of, I'm going to build this today, and good, it's ready to go. That doesn't work with AI. That doesn't work with modern technology. And we have to continue as technology professionals to drive this home to our customers, to our employers, to anybody that will listen to us. Because AI is ever-changing, .NET. All of the other technologies are ever changing. We have to stay on top of that. We have to continuously monitor. And so as we go through this process to identify what are we going to accomplish, what tools might we accomplish, how are we going to validate the solution, we then have to start looking at what do we do after that? Okay, so we came up with a plan. We got something done. We validated. It works. There's a couple more things that we have to really take into consideration when we start to move this into a production ready solution. And this is where things get really, really interesting in my mind. Um, and a lot of times people overlook these things. What's the deployment process look like? How do we actually roll this product out, right? Do we need to go back and do a bunch of historical data loading? Do we need to do user training? What do we need to do to get there? The next two are my key ones spending protections. Do we have things in place to prevent the spend? As you look at AI and you look at AI implementations inside of your organization and the things that you might want to be doing, one of the things that you have to always take into consideration is what the pricing looks like. And unlike a lot of things, where your pricing is, oh, I spent $400 a month on this server because it is a hundred, you know, it's X dollars per hour. AI is so much consumption based that it's incredibly important for you to really go out and look at what information it is that you're doing and, and how you want to do it. And just to drive this point home just a little bit, this is the pricing let me make this apologize. It did not go the right way here. This is the pricing view of Azure AI's content safety. So this is some of the things that do analysis of the of content and looks for like hate speech and, and those kinds of things. Well, Pay as you go is what we got here up at the top, right? The free plan gets you 5,000 text records a month. The standard plan is 38 cents per thousand text records. Well, what in the world is a text record? Well, if we look at the description down here, the test record is in the S tier contains up to a thousand characters as measured by Unicode points. If a text input into the content safety is more than a thousand characters, it counts as one text record for each unit of thousand characters. For instance, if it's 7,500 characters, it's eight text records, etc. So as we start to look at this, right, now we have to start looking at what am I pushing in? To know this and to know our planning, knowing our overall spend, now we have to start to take a deeper look at where is this going? Oh, I'm going to use this to protect a community forum. How many posts do I get? What's the average length of, length of that post? Yes, 38 cents per thousand text records is not necessarily overly crazy. However, it is something that can easily add up over time, especially in public environments, spam riddled areas or other things like that. So it's definitely something to take into consideration. And it's mainly because when you go to look at the commitment tiers, it's a huge, huge jump to get to 
the commitment tier values that actually make sense, right? To get to a commitment tier, the jump becomes $207,000 a year to get to that first jumping tier of doing something different. So as you go and look at this, as you try to figure out what makes sense for your organization, be sure to take the cost aspects and the spending protections in place. Whether you're monitoring the usage, whether you're calculating the usage, whether it's API rate limiting on your side, you need to make sure that you're thinking about as part of that deployment, as part of that final implementation, what's that spend look like with the tools that we're using? Because if not, you can get yourself into a situation where it may have been really simple to whip this up in you know, a sprint to be able to get the behavior, but the overall cost of it may be exponentially more if you don't take that into consideration. And it's important that your dev teams consider things architecturally speaking as well as they're building the solution for you. And then finally, make sure you have a plan for that maintenance. Overall, as time goes on, you will have to maintain this solution. Microsoft is going to change their solutions. Google or whoever else you might be using is going to be changing their solutions. So make sure that you have a plan in place to be able to roll with those punches. Subscribe to the updates. Pay attention to the things that happen out of Ignite. Hopefully, by taking those steps of planning what you want to accomplish, testing it at a small scale, getting it implemented, validating your pricing and spending protections, and then having a maintenance plan, you should be able to get yourself into a really good overall AI solution. It's important though, to take all of these pieces into consideration to build that final solution. This is where in the future, you may need to get with individuals that have experience in the space. We spend a lot of time working with folks that are trying to get this done and they just their mindset is, I want to use AI. Find a problem, find a small problem, find a repeatable problem. Use that. Try to get that in there. I would love to see in the comments here who has had experience with these things in the past. Those that have you know, implemented AI on their own, I would love to see share you know, what were some of the pitfalls that you had? What were some of the things that you needed to uh, overcome as you are working to try to get things out there on your side. And truly, I appreciate you watching today. Please remember to subscribe for future content, I'm trying to get to a more regular uh, content publishing cadence here. So please do subscribe, tell your friends about it. Feel free to ask your questions below. Reach out to me at any time if there's anything that you can do. My content information is available. It's there with a post and everything. So. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.